1 Thessalonians 5, 16. And I am back in the NIV this week. King James, it was fun last week. Why it lasted? But we are back now. I always tease Pastor Kevin because he's a King James boy. Amen. I'm an NIV boy. Amen. But the word of God is the word of God. It's living, sharp, clear. How many have been enjoying Lectio Divina? Amen. Have you been trying that? Yeah. Amen. We had a wonderful time on Thursday. We actually went through the whole exercise of what Lectio Divina is. And you have no idea what I'm saying. Amen. What in the world is Pastor talking about? You can get last week's message. Amen. Or even go to the dive last Thursday and you would get that information. Amen. Lectio Divina is a way of studying the Word of God. Amen. It involves five different processes of how do we hear from God's Word. That we don't look at God's word as just a textbook for information, but we look at the word of God for inspiration, for revelation, and ultimately that brings transformation inside of our lives. Amen. You have your Bible? Get y'all ready this morning? Yeah. All right. Simple verse, very short. Amen. If you if you ever had to do a Bible verse match, this is the verses that you need to read. Because each verse, the first two verses, is only two words. Verse 16 says, Rejoice always. Like that, and that, that's it. Rejoice always. Verse 17, NIV says, pray continually. <laughs> and then verse 18 is a long verse. And give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let me read the whole thing together. Rejoice always. One verse and again, I said, rejoice. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. This is God's will for you in Christ. Christ Jesus. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us pray this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time, and we just ask that you would speak to our hearts, Holy Spirit. Give us what we need in this hour. Father, as the face is different this morning, so does the needs in this hour. But Father, you are a sovereign God that you can speak one word that ministers to each and every, every one of us at the point of our needs this morning. So Father, we just invite your presence in. Send down your anointing. Let yokes be destroyed and burdens be removed because of your power this morning, God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my redeemer and strength. In Jesus' name, I ask for these things. We believe that. Say amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Before we will go deeper in the word of God this morning, I just want to kind of just give a, a, a preface, if you will, to where we have been on our journey, especially for those who are new to the Gathering Church. I want to share about what this year has meant for us here at the Gathering Church. Amen. For the last um, three years, the Lord has been giving us a theme for the year. In 2020, the theme was, what was the theme, church? Soar. Amen. In 2020, what was last year's theme, church? Recovery. Amen. So 2020 was sore. Last year was recovery. And this year, y'all all better answer this, Gavin. What, what is the theme for this year? Okay. Amen. So the theme for this year is transformation. Amen. And that's founded in Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, where it talks about being transformed by the renewing of your mind, presenting your bodies as a living um, sacrifice. And that word that we hear is in the, in the, in, 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 in the original text of that word transform is where we is the Greek word metamorpho where we get the word metamorphosis from. It depicts a caterpillar going through a cocoon stage becoming a butterfly. It, it, it talks about not a temporal change, but a change that's permanent. And we said that this is the year that God is going to begin to make some permanent changes in our lives. Amen. He's going to begin to transform us. He's going to begin to shift us. He's going to begin to do new things as we submit ourselves to the process. Amen. Someone says submit. Amen. Amen. We got to submit ourselves. To the, it's not easy going through the cocoon. Amen. I was telling Pastor Alvern and my wife, I said, I'm going to preach a message called Life in the Cocoon this year. Because I think we need to talk about what the cocoon looks like. Because some of you think that you're in trouble, but you're actually in transition. You're in the cocoon stage. And he just is working on some things in and out of your life. But since the top of the year, we've been focusing on transformation. Um, as we entered into this time of Lent, Lent is that 40-day window, not including the Sundays from Ash Wednesday to Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday. 
Lent is marked as a time of or season of preparation for us as believers. Amen. It is a time of, of observing um, spiritual mo moderation. Um, it's a time of exercising spiritual discipline such as fasting, praying, and repentance. Amen. It's a time for us to really reflect on what Christ has done for us on Calvary. We're literally just a few weeks away from Resurrection Sunday. Amen. This is that time to really think about what Jesus really did for us on Calvary. Because sometimes in the cares of this life, we can lose sight of really who Jesus is to us. And so that's why we took this time to really focus as a church, amen, on arranging our lives for spiritual transformation. Now, I said earlier, we've been in the book Sacred Rhythms. Amen. I don't know if anyone has had their book with them this morning. Amen. Did you get past it for me, Pastor Kevin? Thank you. We've been reading this book, Sacred Rhythms. I think we might have a few copies left. No, we're sold out. Oh, we're sold out. I'm sorry. We're just, well, you go to any of your favorite booksellers. Amen. And get it. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Books a Million. Is this, is this still a Books a Million? Whatever. Christianbook.com. You can get a copy of this book, Sacred Rhythms. It's by Ruth Haley Barkin. Um, for, the, for the last um, three weeks, this is week four of this week, um, we've been in this book. We've been reading a chapter. Last week we read two chapters um, about this book. Now, this week I'm going to give you a little, because last week's assignment was two chapters. So I know some of y'all didn't read my two chapters. I know some of y'all behind. So last week, if you notice, on Thursday when we did the dive, I didn't focus on chapter three and four. I just focus on chapter three. Amen. But I need you to read chapter five this week, amen. And so we're gonna do chapter chapter four and chapter five this week. We're gonna talk about chapter four and chapter five this week. So today we're gonna to be connecting this with prayer. How can we jump prayer? We talked about the word of God last week. Week one of this series, amen. Um four weeks ago, we spoke about the longing for more. That God has put a longing in our hearts for more of Him. Week two, yeah, man, what, what was week two? airplane mode, solitude, amen. We talked about the importance of solitude, that we have to disconnect. When we put our phone on airplane mode, it means I am disconnected from all of the distractions and all of the interferences that are around me so I can focus and zone in on God. And then last week, we spoke about encountering God through scripture, Lecto Divina, amen. We talked about how do we encounter God's word. And so today, as we go into our next Point, we're going to talk about prayer today. And today's, for today's um, topic of prayer, we're going to talk about deepening our intimacy with God. Amen? Deepening our intimacy with God. That's my title today. Prayer, deepening our intimacy with God. We just read in 1 Thessalonians chapter um, 5, verse 16, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen? The verse 17 simply says pray continually. Pray continually. And I want to put a, a, a little asterisk next to that verse this morning because I believe that prayer is the most powerful weapon that you and I have as followers of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. amen. The reason that we are distracted so much most times is in the area of prayer. And most of us sometimes as believers struggle the most, struggle most in the area of prayer. The Bible lets us know that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous of their much. That simply means that your prayers are dynamic and powerful. And oftentimes, we are distracted by the kids of this life, we're distracted by media, we're distracted by so many things around us that will stop us from really embracing God through prayer or deepening our intimacy with God through prayer. Prayer is simple communication with God. It's communicating with God. Prayer is having a relationship with God. Prayer is where we humbly communicate, worship, and sincerely seek God's face. It's knowing that he hears us, loves us, and will respond to us. Amen? Even though it might not always be in the desire and the manner in which we want. Amen? Because sometimes we could pray for something, but God could do something totally different. Amen? There's been times I pray for healing, but God brought the healing by taking that person home and through the Lord. Amen? Sometimes I pray that God will open up this door, but he closed the door, but he had a bigger door open that I didn't even know about. So sometimes God can respond to your prayer in a different way, a different form, or a different manner. Amen? Because God knows what's best for us. Amen? He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He sees the, the beginning of the thing from the end of the thing. Amen? 
that, that means he has the full spectrum, the full breadth of your life. He sees everything. And so he knows that if I were to answer this prayer, it's going to mess up what I got for you down here in the future. So no, I'm not going to answer this prayer right now, but I'm going to shift you in this area so you could be allowed to get this greater blessing I have for you down here. And so we just have to be open to how God responds to prayer. Now, prayer can, um, prayer can incorporate so many different things. Prayer is not for God's benefit. Prayer is for our benefit. Someone say our benefit. Yeah, prayer is for your benefit. Amen. It's out there. We need a relationship with God. The Bible says we were created for his pleasure. Amen? And that is available through Jesus Christ. Amen? Because prayer is such a powerful thing, it can um, encompass all sorts of, 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 of areas of our life. So we don't just pray in church. We pray at home. We can pray when you're driving. We can pray wherever you are. We can pray in the supermarket. pray in the, in the bathroom. Wherever you can pray anywhere. So prayer is not tied to a geographical location. You can pray wherever you are and seek God wherever you are. Now, here's the challenge that you and I face when it comes to this whole topic of prayer. Some people I've asked over the years, how come you don't pray? What, what's your struggle in prayer? Pastor, I don't know how to pray. Pastor, I don't know what to do. And so many times we struggle in this area why people don't pray more because they don't know how to pray. Um, sometimes we pray. Some people are not sure if they're doing it the right way. So they get discouraged by that. Um, some people, we're not sure if God's going to answer their prayer. So they don't think that they should pray. They don't know if God's really going to answer. Some people get bored and distracted. How many of you have ever been bored and distracted in prayer? The phone go off. You get hungry. I said, prayer on my knees. My knees start hurting. My, you get tired. You get sleep. How many of you ever tried to sleep in prayer? <laughs> so that happens at times. Amen. Sometimes people don't pray because they think their requests are too small. Or God is running the world. He don't care about my little situation over here. But God does care about your little situation. Amen. If the Bible says he, he keeps his eyes on the sparrow, yes. how much more can he keep his eyes on you and no matter what you are going through? Amen. Amen. Um, some people are not sure if their prayers will make a difference. But the Bible lets us know that our prayers, the prayers of a righteous man and woman are effective. They do make a difference. And sometimes, if we'll be honest, we're just spiritually lazy and apathetic. Amen? We don't pray because we're just not motivated to pray. Some of us, the only time we pray is when something goes wrong. But we want to make a deal with God. God, if you do this, I'll do that. If you hold your hand in the bargain, I'll do my part. And then when God do it, guess what happens? We still don't do it. Some of the people that I see that come to church, come to church because when God puts the fire under them, and now they come in because now they're in the, they're in the thick of, 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 of the fire. So now they need God to come through. But once everything gets light, whew, then they disappear. Then they disappear. I told you last week, I said, you know, when this, when, when this pandemic first hit, everybody was crying, I can't get to the church. I can't get to the building. I wish I could be here. I wish and the church opened. I didn't see a lot of folks that didn't come back. I'm still waiting for some folks to come back. Because we were in the thick of it. That's when we want to pray and seek God and, and turn ourselves to him. But then when the pressure alleviates, then it's like, I can go back to what I used to do. You know? And that's why God always challenged Israel in the, in the Old Testament. He said, hey, you're giving me lip service. You know, you're lip saying you love me, but your heart is far from me. Because you're saying one thing just to get out of this situation, to get out of this battle. But then once I give you the victory over this battle, you still go back and backslide and do the things that you used to do. When we talk about transformation this year, we're talking about a permanent transformation. This is not something that's temporal. This is not a 2022 fad. This is something that's going to transform you and change you for the rest of your existence. That's the type of shift and change that God wants to bring in your life. But it happens through the mode or the method of prayer. The Bible lets us know in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. It says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So that means we can come boldly. We don't, we don't have to wonder, are our prayers hitting the ceiling and falling back down to the floor? We know that we can come boldly before God, amen, and know that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. Verse 15 says, and we know that he hears us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. So whatever we need, we have what we ask of him. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, 
this will I tell you. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Somebody say yours. Yeah. Amen. Whatever you believe God, amen, believe it will be yours. Amen. And the last in Psalm chapter 5, verse 1 to 3 says, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my sighing. Listen to my cry for help. My king and my God, I pray to you. In the morning, oh Lord, you hear my voice. In the, in the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Amen? And wait in expectation. Here's the word of God. We're building a foundation that God hears us. That you don't have to have reverend in front of your name or prophet in front of your name. Amen? You don't have to be in the church 20 years. Amen? There, there, there's, the, there's no special access card for prayer. Amen. You might not pray as eloquently as others. When I first became a believer, man, I didn't know how to pray. You know, I watched others and they were, Father, God, we thank you. And they're so suspicious and foolish for this monumental move of God that we release the anointing on the people of God today, that we will transcend from glory to glory, to faith to faith, that we will activate the glory of God, that we will leave here in a new perpetual mind state of glory. And I'm like, that sounds so good, but I don't know how to pray like that. I'm like, Lord, thank you for keeping me another day. Cover me in Jesus' name. Amen. And you know what? That prayer is just as powerful as the first prayer I just said. Because it's not so much about the quality, it's the quantity. It, 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 it's coming from your heart. And the devil will make us believe because we don't pray like the first prayer that our prayers are not effective, but that is a lie from the pit of hell. There's been times I was on the highway and a car or a deer came or whatever. I could just say, Jesus, and that was my prayer. Amen. I didn't have time. Father, move the deer out the road so I won't get it so baby can live and I can live. I don't got a Jesus. <laughs> and that prayer was just as anointed Amen. as the first eloquent prayer I just prayed. Yeah. And so we have to know that he will give ear to our words. Amen. That we don't have to feel inadequate or feel because I don't pray the way the pastor pray or the way mother such and such pray, that God's not going to hear you. That God will hear you just as much as he hears me. Amen? Amen. Now, what really matters to God when you pray? What really matters? You know, what is God looking for when you pray? I believe there are five areas that I'm going to quickly go through, and you can jot these down this morning. What really matters to God when you pray? Number one, the first thing is your relationship matters. With God. Amen. Your relationship matters. Jesus said it in Mark 11, 24, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you received it, it will be yours. Amen. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him. I'll say that again. If you hold anything against anyone, forgive him or her, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Your relationship matters. If you are harboring stuff against somebody, guess what happened? It hinders your prayers. If you're holding unforgiveness in your heart, it hinders your prayer. Amen? If you have issues with your spouse, married folk, amen? Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wife and treat them with respect as the weaker partner. Weaker not meaning weak and straight, meaning finer. Think about something that's china. Because we always say, women are the weaker vessel. That's not what the Bible means. Women are not weak. Women are very strong. Okay? They give birth. They do a whole lot of stuff. They go through a whole lot of hell. They don't get the respect that they need. Amen. So when it says weaker vessel, it doesn't mean weaker in terms of strength. It talks about finer. Think about China. You don't picture China in a cavern. You picture China in a, in a, in a glass case. You, you treat your China with respect. That's not the case. That's what the Apostle Paul was saying. So a lot of people twist the scripture because they don't study the word of God. They don't know the truth. That's not what Paul meant. He didn't mean weaker in terms of strength. Oh, they weakly and men are powerful. No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying they should be treated with respect. They, they be treated with honor, respect. But they're, they're fine. You know, they're, they're beautiful. Yes, they are fine. Yeah. They're fine. My wife is fine. I can get she is fine. But fine is like fine china. Yeah. Amen? You, 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 don't, you, don't fit the, you don't fit that with the plastic plates. Come on now. You don't fit that with the plastic forks, all right? This is not a takeout plate. Amen? This is china. This is something of, of eloquence. This is something of opulence. This is something that's unique and, 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 and beautiful. So that's how you're supposed to treat your wife. But the Bible says, you, you, um, treat them with respect as the weaker partner, as heirs with you in the gracious gift of life. And we know that they're equal. The Bible says they're heirs with you, not heirs under you, heirs with you. So the same access, the same grace, the same power, the same salvation I have, they have the same access, the same power, the same great grace, and, 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 and all the things that I have available to me or all the things they have available to them. And it continues to say, so, so that nothing will hinder your prayer. Nothing will hinder your prayer. So if our relationship is not 
not right with those who are around us, they affect our prayer. Have you ever had an issue with your spouse? Yeah, some heated fellowship, you had an argument, you had a disagreement, and you work it out. It's kind of hard to really pray. It's kind of hard to pray for those who you have issues with. It's kind of hard to say, Lord, bless my husband. Oh, that nigga will get on my nerve. No, no, you got to be honest. You got to be honest about what's happening, what's going on, because your prayers will be hindered if you're holding that stuff. So what matters about when you pray, your relationships matter. Number two, your motives matter. Why are you praying what you're praying? What is the mo- Lord bless with a million bucks. Why should you bless with a million bucks if you can't even tithe off of 10 bucks? If you can't give him a penny from the dime, what makes you think he's going to bless you with $100,000? If you, if you can't give him a penny, then he knows he can't trust you with $100,000 or the million. Because it's going to always be an excuse why you can't do what you do. So your motives matter. When you act, do not, when you act, do not, um, do not, um, when you act, do not receive because you act with the wrong, when you do not receive because you act with the wrong motive. James 4.3 says. A man's ways seem innocent to him, but the motives are weighed by the Lord. Proverbs 16.2. God looks at your motives. Your motives play a key integral part of when you pray. You have to act with the right intention. Number three, I'll keep moving. Um, the way you live matters. Don't think you can live any type of way you want to live and pray and expect God to just move the heavens and the earth for you. The Bible says the, the effectual purpose of the righteous man availeth much. Righteous means that you're living holy. You're living a righteous life. Amen. That doesn't mean you're perfect. Doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. Doesn't mean that 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 you don't have setbacks. That's not what that scripture says. The scripture says you made a decision to constantly walk in God's righteousness and truth every day. So the way you live matters. The way you live matters. The Lord is far from the wicked, but He hears the prayers of the righteous. Proverbs fifteen twenty nine. The fourth thing is your faith matters. Amen. Someone say faith. Amen. That's right. James chapter 1, verse 6 through 7 says, But when he asks, the person who's praying, he must believe and not doubt. Not doubt. Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea. Think about the ocean. Blown, tossed, and blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think, that man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. In other words, you can't be praying and say, Lord, I believe you can do it, and then but Lord, if you want to do it, you can do it, Lord, because I, I, I kind of believe you could do it, but maybe you're really not going to do it. You ain't going to get nothing. Because you, you, you're playing in and out, up and down. God wants you to believe him. Your faith matters. Amen? The way you come to Jesus Christ, you confess with your mouth, believe, you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. It starts with faith. And if your faith is not activated, you're not going to receive anything from the Lord. So your faith matters. Your faith plays an important part of prayer. These are the things God is looking at when we pray. It's not so much that these and thighs are auspicious. God, I love you. No, 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 no. It's what's behind that. That's what he's looking at. And last but not least, the fifth thing is God's will matters. Someone say God's will. That's right. God's will matters. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, his will, his will, he hears us. When we pray according to his will, heaven will move on our behalf. If you pray for something and it came to pass and it happened, guess what? Because it was a part of his will. Let me pray, Lord, send me a godly spouse, and you married a godly spouse because it was, was a part of his will. Some of you pray, God, send me a godly spouse, and you don't got no spouse right now. You see him by yourself, but right now, that's according to his will. This is your season. Amen? You have to enjoy every season in your life. Amen? Man, you know my wife and I testified for 16 years. We prayed that God would bless us with a child, went to two, two miscarriages. It wasn't his will at the time. But in 2019 of July 9th, 2019, it was his will and Nick Nathan Grace was born. Because it was his will. 
So when you pray according to his will, no demon in hell, no devil, no hindrance, no hex, no spell, no ink, nothing can stop what God's will can accomplish in your life. So that's what he looks at. He looks at his will. His will matters. And we know, continuing in verse um, 15, and we know in 1 John 5, and we know that he hears us whatever we ask, we know that we have received of him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we must have a relationship with God. Amen. Through Christ Jesus. That is how we build our prayer life. Amen. With God. Amen. Amen. John 9, 31 says, we know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Amen? The only time that God listens to a sinner is when the sinner repents and says, I need you to be the Lord of my life. I surrender. Amen? Think about it. If my daughter were to come to my house, she don't have to knock on the door. It's her house. I'm her father. Whatever I know she has need of, I will give it to her. Even the things that she will know she has need of, I'll give it to her because I'm her father. Now, if a stranger come walking in my house, I'm like, who are you? I don't know you. I'm not your father. I have no acquaintance or no relationship with you. That's how our Heavenly Father looks. We are children of God. If you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, that's why we can come boldly to the throne of grace because that's our father. We don't have to, Lord, beg, Lord, we, we, we beg you, Lord, we beg. Why are you begging your father? Daddy, this is what I have need of. I, I can come confident. I don't have to come trembling in fear, unless I did something wrong, because, you know, daddy will whip your butt too, right? When, when my daughter hear Madison Grace, not her niece, when she hear Madison Grace, she know, uh-oh, that means, when I call, when I call that middle name, she's like, oh, 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 okay, daddy. She know. She know. But she can come boldly and say, Daddy, I want this. Daddy, I want this. Daddy, I want that. Come boldly. That's the same way God wants you to come to him. Father, Abba, Father, Daddy, this is what I need from you. This is what I, I, I want from you. But for a sinner, they have not made you the Lord of their life, so God is not their father. You are, you are adopted into God. You are adopted in. He receives you once you receive him. Remember we said draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you. Amen? Because people have to say, oh, God is the Father of everybody. No, 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 no. That's not what the Bible says. If you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, God is not their Heavenly Father. He's your Heavenly Father. How can they have access to the benefits of you living your life a righteous way? How can they have the same access to the benefits that, that you have? No one has access to, to, to my name and, and, and to my wealth other than my own children, my own seed. So if I have not, if, 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 if I have not committed my life to Christ, then I don't have no access to the promises of God. If God does anything, it's because he's, done, he's doing it out of his mercy, out of his benevolence. He don't have to do it. But when I'm a child of God, oh, that's a different story then. Because now I'm called his own. Now I'm, I'm adopted. Now I belong to him. I'm called the child of God. So that means that he's not just God. He's my father. So my idea is that he's my daddy yo. All right, now, it's something personal now. My Spanish folk, he's my poppy. He's my papa, yeah. my Italian folk. That's the one who I connect with. This, this, this is something personal now going on. He's not some strength, some object creature. He's not some genie that I just rub every now and then to get my wishes made. That's not God. But when you're a child of God, you can come boldly before God. Now, there are three expressions of prayer that we, that we pray. Some of us, we, 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 we like one or the other, but all three are equally important. I need you to hear this this morning because sometimes we have the wrong concept of what prayer really is. Number one, the first expression of prayer is vocal prayer. If I say vocal. vocal. Yes, this is a prayer, amen, by which we speak to God. We open up our mouths, Father, in the name of Jesus. We talk to God. We use our mouths, amen. Some of us are not used to using our mouths. Amen. We use our mouth for everybody else. When we come to God, we... No, there's, there's, there's an expression of prayer where you need to open your mouth. I mean, sometimes you see our worship leader up here, the worship coach. Amen. He said, okay, open your mouth and praise God. Open. There's a power. There's power when you speak. There's power when you speak. So there's a point to speak, you know, to open up your mouth and to pray your prayers audibly. Amen. That, that is powerful. That's 
what we need to do. Amen? By words, amen, um, our prayers take on flesh when we speak our words. Amen? So it's not just something happening in the recesses of our mind and heart, but it's something that's happening because we actually hear ourselves praying. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. How can we hear if no one ain't talking? And sometimes I don't have, sometimes I don't, I don't have the opportunity to, to, to hear my favorite preacher. Sometimes I don't have that. You don't have the opportunity to hear pastors. But guess what you have to do? You have to open your mouth and speak the word of God to your So when you read the Bible, Lectio Divina, last week, you go back to that. When you read the word of God, every time you read the scripture out loud, guess what's happening? You are building your own faith. So it's so important that you open your mouth and read the word of God. Amen. It's, and, and pray audibly. There's a power when we open our mouth. We talk about the word of faith. A word is formed from your mouth. Words not just in your mind. You have to speak. Someone say speak. Free. Yeah. So the first expression of prayer is vocally. Amen. We have to vocally pray. The Bible says you will confess with your mouth and believe in your that's right. There has to be, you have to open your mouth. You have to open your mouth. And so that's how you start relationship. You have to open your mouth. Now let's keep on going because there's two other expressions. Amen? Because some of you do a lot of talking, but now some of you need to be quiet. So let's flip the script now. Because some of you talk too much, and God's like, shh, be quiet. There's a prayer called contemplative prayer. Contemplative prayer. We pray contemplatively. It will be rest in God in silence. Contemplative prayer is silence. It's a type of prayer in which we are one with Christ and in communion and in communion of his love engaged at his grace in our lives. It's that quiet prayer. Our Catholic brothers and sisters do that very well. Very well. Contemplative prayer. You know, when you come to a, a, a loud church like this, you think the only prayer is, ah, take it, take it. Oh, God. And yes, we do do that. Don't get, don't get twisted. Now, we do do that. But there's a time when you say, be still and know that I'm God. You can stop from your striving. Because sometimes with, with, with the vocal prayer, it's, it's our striving. It's, you, know, we, you, know, we, you know, we're animated. We're excited. We're emotional. We get, we get into it. But sometimes God just says, I need you to just relax. Just be still before me. That's contemplative prayer. That's prayer in silence. That's, that, that, that's when you just begin just to, to quiet your spirit. Amen. Begin to center your heart and put your focus on God and his grace. That's important too. Amen. That's important too. The last, the last expression of prayer is med med meditative prayer. Med meditative prayer. We pray meditatively. Amen. It's when we actually are thinking about God. Amen. You read Joshua, I meditate on your word day and night. Night. Amen. Now, this is different from contemplative prayer. The contemplative prayer is you're just really quiet in your heart just to hear. Meditative prayer is not you taking scripture, you're, you're, you're taking the word of God that, that, that you've read, you're reading what you're studying, and now you're thinking about it. You're, you're chewing the cud. Like I say, cows chew the cud, they spit it back up, they chew it again, they spit it back up. You, you're doing that with the word of God. You're chewing the word of God, you let it come back up, you're chewing the word of God, you're feasting, you, you're meditating on it. You, you, it's opening your eyes up. You, 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 you're seeing things. As you read the word of God, you read one scripture, all of a sudden another scripture pops in that connects with that thing you just read. You say, oh my God, for God so loved the world. But about the women, first John, God is love. And then you go to God is love. Then you go from God is love, then you, then you go to another scripture that is with love. And that's, that, that, that's meditative prayer. So now you're meditating on the word of God. So there, there are these three expressions of prayer, vocally, contemplatively, and meditatively. So that, that, is, that, that is how we, 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 we pray. Amen? And there's nothing wrong with any one of them. I would say we need to practice all three of them. So there might be one, you say, well, I talk a lot, but well, maybe you need to be silent. You might say, well, I don't really talk to them. I'm quiet. Maybe you need to speak. Well, I don't really take time to really think about the word of God. Well, maybe you need to have some meditative prayer. Right. You need to exercise all three of those expressions of prayer so that you can deepen your intimacy with God. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. So my last, my, my last portion of my message today is that I'm going to talk about the kinds of prayer. The kinds of prayer. I told you about the expressions of prayer, how we should pray. Vocally, meditatively, contemplatively, but there are different types of prayer. I'm going to go through them real quick today. 
Everybody say quick. Okay. Number one, Miss Akon. Don't worry, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be forever on one. I'm gonna move quickly. But you need, you need to understand this. First prayer is the prayer of faith. Someone say faith. faith. James five fifteen says, and the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. Amen. And in this context, prayer is offered in faith for someone who is sick and asking God to heal them. When we pray, we ought to believe in His power, goodness, His power and the goodness of God. Amen. So it's the prayer of faith. When you pray, you pray a prayer of faith. When someone's going through in their body, we pray the prayer of faith. Amen. The prayer of faith produces the healing. Amen. So some of you praying a prayer of healing, but you got no faith, and that's why God ain't doing nothing. You have to pray the prayer of faith that produces the healing. You pray the faith in the one who can move the mountain. So the first time you pray, you pray is the prayer of faith. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you pray the prayer of faith. Because you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you will be saved. That is the prayer of faith. Amen. Faith is what unlocks the promises of God in your life. Faith is the key that unlocks the door. If you don't have the key, you ain't getting through the door. So the prayer of faith. Next type of prayer, prayer of agreement. Everybody say agreement. Yes, this is also known as corporate prayer. When we come together to pray as a church, we come together every Tuesday for our, our, our 6 a.m. morning prayer call. That's corporate prayer. Amen? The Bible lets us know in Acts 1.14, after Jesus ascended, the disciples all joined together constantly in prayer. Later in Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, we know that they devoted themselves to prayer. So they prayed the prayer of agreement. It's something special Amen. When we all come together in prayer. I mean, I love praying by myself, but something when you lock arms with somebody. See, I'm from the old school. Before church would start, there would be a prayer circle and, and, and at the yeah. altar. And we'd just be all holding hands, just asking God to move today, to speak to us. And to, you know, now, you know, everybody come in and maybe, you know, you know they talking or whatever. But back in the old school, amen, we used to pray. We, I see people on the altar laid out, prostrate over their face, cry out to the Lord. Where's that church at? I don't see that church no more. You know, we too cute in our, in, 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 in our skinny jeans to get on the floor anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay, don't talk about me too bad. All right. <laughs> but the prayer of agreement, corporate prayer. So we need to get back to a place of corporate prayer because there's, a, there's been times where I felt so heavy, so burdened. But when I got into the environment of corporate prayer, something shifted. There's been times in the past I've come down those steps and I'm just like, I don't really feel like praising God today. Yes, pastor, don't feel like always praising God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> then Minister Barrett said, come on and give him a praise. I'm like, I'm your worship coach. You got to give us more than that. Make some noise. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that was some of y'all this morning, by the way. Y'all ain't hollering. Y'all ain't making no vocal prayers up in here. Because sometimes you don't feel like it. But then Amen. something happens when the atmosphere begins to shift. So all of a sudden that clap goes a little louder. You start going, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Something happened. Because you're in an environment of faith and begin to charge your spirit. So that's the power of corporate prayer. That's why it's so important to get into the house of God. To get into the atmosphere, to log on, amen, and join us because what's happening here is transport their rate to you. It's important to get in the environment of prayer. Prayer is powerful. Number three, amen. Um, everybody says supplication, a prayer of supplication. Yes, supplication is when we take our requests to the Lord. These are our personal requests. We make our supplication to him. The Bible says, do not be, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, do not be anxious about anything, but everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Amen? Praise the Lord. So we are need to, 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 to pray with supplication. This is your prayer request. When you start praying, just, 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 just give you a little, uh, a little tip. When you start praying, you don't start praying, Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I need this, bless me, Lord, bless me. That's not how you pray. Even the Lord's model of prayer, when Jesus said, he said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. He always opened up his time of prayer with the praise, yeah. giving thanks. So you don't start your prayer, Lord, bless me today, cover me as I go to work today, Lord, do what 
I need you to do today, Lord. Give me what I need today, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Cover me, Lord. Me, 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 me. Well, I, that's, that's not, no, 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 no. And that's why that happened for you. You start with prayer. Come on. Look, 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 look. When my daughter wants something, she comes, hi, daddy. I love you, daddy. And she does this, I love you, daddy, out of nowhere. And she's put her head on me, and she bats her eyes. I love daddy. I'm like, I what do you want? And you can't be hard, because you see that sweet face, you're like, oh, what do you want, baby? How, how much you need? Come here. What, you want another blippy toy? What, 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 what's the, that's what praise does to God. God, give me what I need. Give me how you, my father. You're supposed to ride for me. I'm coming, Bo. No, 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 no. Slow your roll. Slow your roll. Slow your roll. Lord, I thank you for waking me up. You didn't have to do it, Lord, but you did. I love you because even when I was unlovable, you still reached your hand of grace to me. Even when I stumbled and fell, God, and even though I was full of shame, you still came down in your grace and you picked me up. Even when I said I was never going to do it again, but I did again, but yet you still was there like, 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 like the prodigal father, you know, and, and welcomed me home into your arms. When he begins to hear things like that, he hears a grateful heart. And when he hears a grateful heart, he responds to that. That's the type of prayer he's going to answer because he hears you come about home. When them tears start rolling down your face and you begin to think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, and you know you darn right don't deserve it. That's the type of prayer that God wants us to pray. Then you can bring your supplication to God and say, okay, okay God, I'm Okay, God, I love you so much, but you know I have these needs. You know I have these, these, these requests, and that's what you can bring. So you don't have to be anxious about anything, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. That's the key. That's the hinge. With thanksgiving. Then you can present your quest to God. If ain't no thanksgiving, don't bother with the request. Don't, don't, don't even bother. Don't even bother. All right, let's keep going. The prayer of thanksgiving. Amen? With thanksgiving. That's the next point, number four. The prayer of thanksgiving. Now, the prayer of thanksgiving is not hinged on what you need God to do. The prayer of thanksgiving is just so I thank you. Have you just ever gave God a prayer of thanksgiving? You don't need nothing. I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. It could have been me. Thank you. You just want to thank God. Have you just ever had a thank you, God moment? A thank you? Have you just been in your car? You know, but there's been some time I'm trying to cry because tears fill my eyes. So let me slow down. I'm speeding. Because you just get so caught up in the moment. How many have had that? You had to slow your tears. Have you had to pull over and just get a good cry out? Thank you, God! That sloppy agape cry. You know, just let it all out. You know, but there are moments when you just have to give God thanks. It's the prayer of thanksgiving. It's the prayer of thanksgiving. Amen. Giving thanks. Amen. Giving thanks to God. Next type of prayer is the prayer of worship. Amen. It's what we do here every Sunday when we open up our worship experience. But it should not just happen here on a Sunday. This needs to happen throughout the week. Okay? Worship is not just a Sunday morning 10 a.m. experience. Worship should be a part of your life. Amen? The prayer of worship. Amen? It's the prayer of, of worship. Now, the prayer of worship is very similar to the prayer of thanksgiving, but here's the difference between worship and thanksgiving. The prayer of worship focuses on who God is. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. That's, it's focusing on who God is. Thanksgiving is for what God has done. That's the difference. That's the difference. So there's a prayer of thanksgiving, but there's also a prayer of worship. Amen? Acts 13, chapter 2, verse 3 says, And while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart me, Barnabas, and so for the work which I've called them. In the atmosphere of worship is when God begins to ignite and begins to send people forth and begins to do great things in our lives. So we're worshiping God for who he is. Amen? Let's keep on. Number six, the prayer of consecration. Everybody say consecration. consecration. The word consecration means to be set apart. Okay? It means to be set apart. A prayer of consecration is saying, Lord, I set my life apart for you. 
When you come to my house and go into my cupboard, there's a cup you do not touch because that is Arthur's cup. That cup has been set apart for my use. But if yes, because they go to any other cup, but they know that, that, that crystal cup with the handle, that cup is a special gift to me. You do not drink out of that cup because that cup is for my use. That's how your life should be with God. No one else can have you. You are his cup. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting in my soul. Your cup should be God's cup. That he can use you and handle you and maneuver you and guide you however he wants you. He, however he wants to do, whatever his will is for your life. But until you pray the prayer of consecration, you don't give him access to do that. Amen. Some of you pray the E again, Lord, I give you myself, and I take myself away. I give myself away, but then I take it back so you can't use me. I give myself away, <laughs> then I take it back so you can't use me. I give myself away, and you keep going back and forth, and you ain't with God. But the prayer of consecration says, I draw the line in the sand, and God, here I am, send me, I'll go. prayer of consecration. Jesus said, Matthew 26, 39, Lord, let this cup pass from me. Is there another way? But nevertheless, that was Jesus' prayer of cons consecration. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. I'm going to fully surrender and commit myself to you, even though it's going to end in pain and death. But you know what? This is why I was sent it. This is my assignment. This is what I'm going to do. That's the prayer of consecration. Lord, no matter what, no matter what, I'm going to serve you. Not my will, but your will. Number seven, the prayer of intercession. Everybody say intercession. intercession. That's right, intercession. Amen. Many times our prayers include requests um, from others as we intercede for them. Amen. This can also be included in supplication, but supplication is your personal request. But now you're setting in the gap for somebody else now. Someone say, can you pray for me? Can you remember me in prayer? Or someone say, I, or, or, you, or you see a need that you can pray for, or somebody might not ask for you to pray, but you're going to pray about a particular circumstance or situation? That's the prayer of intercession. Amen? We are told to make intercession for everyone in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Jesus serves as our example in this area. Amen? In John 17, Jesus prayed a prayer on behalf of his disciples and all believers everywhere. Read John 17. It's Jesus praying. He's interceding. Amen. Jesus is our ultimate intercessor. Amen. He's the mediator between God and man, between us and God. Amen. But we are also called to stand in the gap to pray for our brothers and for our sisters. Someone say, pray for me. Pray for me. Yeah, I need you to pray for me, and I will pray for you. Amen. I will pray for you. And the last prayer, someone say, praying in the spirit. Oh, yeah, praying in the spirit. This, 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 this is one that a lot of people don't focus on. But we read throughout the whole New Testament about the Apostle Paul saying praying in the spirit. And you know, what are you praying? What are you praying in the spirit? Jude, Jude 20 says, build yourself up in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen? And so when we, when we talk about praying in the spirit, what does that mean, praying in the spirit? You go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The Apostle Paul says, when I pray in an unknown tongue, I am praying in the, in the Spirit. So he gave us the affirmation, what does it mean to pray in the Spirit? He's talking about praying in your heavenly prayer language. He's talking about praying in your heavenly prayer language. That's why it's so important to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit so you can receive your prayer language. Because this sometimes when I pray in English, it ain't, ain't, ain't getting me nowhere. You know, but when I begin to pray in tongues, when I begin to pray in my heavenly prayer language, all of a sudden I am activated. I ascend. I break through all that stuff. Amen. And I break through and I get what I need to get from the Lord. So it's important that we pray in the spirit. And if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know what you need to do? Lord, I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Give my prayer language. Give, it's that simple. I didn't come. I didn't, when, I, when I first spoke in tongues, I, didn't speak, I, I wasn't even in church when I spoke in tongues. I went to church after I spoke in tongues. I, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in my school cafeteria at 15 years old. There was a group of believers praying. They were praying in the Spirit. I'm like, I don't know what that, what that job is. I don't know nothing about that. What are they saying? Who are they talking about? Is that demonic? What, what's going on? And I just kept coming around them, coming around them because the Holy Spirit was wooing me. Has God ever wooed you somewhere? Some of you here today for the first time because God is. You don't know where it's going to end, but God is. 
in wooing you because he said there's some more that you want. I'm, I'm going to give it to you right here. He said, I could come back to the Christmas club every Thursday. And I said, well, I got the wife. I said, well, I want that. But I want what they have. I don't know. I can't really understand exactly all what it is. But I know that they have a joy that I don't have. They have a peace that I don't have. There's something about them that I want. I want that for myself. And I just kept coming back and coming back and coming back. And one day, I remember, it was, it was June 10th, 1993. I'll never forget the day. And we were praying in a circle. And we prayed. And everybody was praying in tongues. We just, you know, praying in English and, and praying with understanding and praying in the spirit. Amen. We don't just pray all tongues. We pray with understanding. Amen. And in the spirit, people praying. And then we said amen. I said, okay, amen. Then the janitor of the school, amen, it was Fred. He came in, and he said, I heard y'all crying. He had tears in his eyes. Now, think about it. We're all teens, and here's a grown man who's sweeping and mopping the cafeteria while we're in there praying. And he said, I need y'all to pray for me. My wife wants to leave me. I've been going through too much in my marriage. You're telling teens this now. And so we said, come in a circle, Fred. So he came in a circle. We put arms around him again. And he began to pray. And when I began to pray for him, I was in hallelujah, the hundred little go coaster, because the focus wasn't on me anymore. It was praying for him. And that was the power of intercession. We began to pray. And so I learned at that moment when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there was an access to power and authority that I had that my current language in English couldn't get me. And I think sometimes because, you know, people wonder, is that for today? It is for today if it happened to me. I ain't never done weird. And the Bible never said it ended. This is Acts chapter 29 right here. Yeah, about Acts 28 ends. This is Acts 29 right here. Acts never ended. We are still in the book of Acts. Acts stands for the Acts of the Holy Spirit. He is still moving. He is still baptizing those in the Holy Spirit. There, there's no special, there's no special mark where he can have and I can't have it. You keep on seeking. Might as well keep on knocking till you receive. Keep on praying. My wife sat down around. She cooked up with these today. She prayed for a good while for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And every time you know, come to all, you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, people come get filled, people start crying, fall on the floor, having all these encounters with God, but yet no, no prayer later. And she kept coming back and coming back, come back. And one day, we had a, a youth service at our church. I'll never forget the, I had to be maybe about 16, 17 at the time. And the Holy Spirit moved so powerfully that they could not end the service. So they just said, if you want to go home, go home. Those who want to pray some more, let's go into the, into the classroom and pray. So we went in that classroom. Man, Elder EJ, we didn't get out there until like midnight. Like it was like late. And I remember my wife right there on, 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 on her knees. All of a sudden, God gave her a sudden awakening. I remember Sister Marola. Pastor Kevin's wife. We was at a Bible study on a Thursday night. Some of y'all remember this. We were at the SBU chapel. Yeah. And we were at the chapel. Amen. And she said, you know, I always received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I never received the, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, I, you know, sometimes I get scared. I, I feel something happening, and I, I just kind of fall back because I, I get scared. I said, first of all, God is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on you. You have to yield yourself to him, and he'll pull you. That night, we prayed for seven minutes, a good hour. And boom, she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So God can fill you. So Monique, no, because she got the baptism of the Holy Spirit on a Thursday night. God can fill you. And it don't have to be in the church. I wasn't even going to church. You can experience the power of God in your life. There is power when you pray in the Spirit. And you're not using the baptism of the Holy Spirit. First of all, those who speak in tongues, we don't use it as a badge to say, I speak in tongues. But I mean, I'm deeper and more spiritual than you. The devil is alive. You got some tongue talkers who will go bust hell wide open. So it's not a spiritual badge. It's just a different experience. It's taking your walk with God to the next level. And if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, keep seeking until you receive. God knows the time and the place and when you're supposed to receive that next measure of power and grace in your life. But don't get discouraged because it didn't happen the first time, the second time, the tenth time. Or time. Keep on seeking. He will give it to you. When Pastor Kevin first came to this church, he wasn't praying in tongues. 
I just knew he was. I was like, you come from a Nigeria fire, you know, African church. We believe the fire of God. We enjoy every foul spirit in the name. I just knew. I just knew he came rub up. I just knew that was what that was. He said, no, Pastor, every time I would get there, you know, the, I, I, I would feel something happening in my mouth, but I would kind of, you know, get back up. You know when you see the best in the Holy Spirit at? Y'all gonna laugh at this. Did he get any church? He got it at the gym on a treadmill. <laughs> Listen to praise and worship music. He was, hallelujah. Let me get off this treadmill before I fall off this thing. <laughs> so there's no designated place. You know what Pastor Edgar got the Holy Spirit at? On his bed. At 17 years old. Before he went to sleep, he said a prayer and got bastard rain on the bed. We have nothing to know about. You know what you got to pass the Holy Spirit? Go on to the refrigerator, giving God thanks. Yeah. So there is no, oh, it got to be in church when Pastor have the altar call, he's going to lay hands on me. Some would receive him that way. But you know, so, by yourself, in your own prayer closet, by yourself, yeah. crying out to God. My mom in the back, home, in her prayer closet, by herself. So there is no designated area. You just continue to seek God earnestly. And at the right time, he will do the work. Don't become discouraged if you haven't received. You keep on, I said, keep on. Keep on seeking. Keep on asking. And you will receive. Praying in the spirit. I'm done. I'm closing today. That's it. We're done. Did you receive something today? God wants us to deepen our intimacy with him through prayer. Amen. Amen. He wants us to deepen our intimacy with him in prayer. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Pray continually. Let this church be a church of prayer. A, ch a church that takes prayer seriously. That we're not praying just to pray. We're not praying out of religious duty. We're praying because we have a true relationship with God. Yeah. I'm asking all heads to be bowed and eyes to be closed. Let's limit our movement in the sanctuary at this time. As the music is playing softly, I, I want to pray for two, 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 two groups today. First group is I will pray for those who are believers, those who are followers of Jesus Christ. I want to challenge you today. Maybe you've been struggling in your prayer life. Lately, I've been struggling. If we're honest with ourselves, we know that there's a level or there's a desire for more of God through prayer. But maybe we've been missing those moments with God. Maybe we've been so distracted or so burdened or so out of whack that we have missed those times that we should have been praying. Maybe we've been distracted by social media and Netflix binges that we have not given God the proper time that belongs to him. I said last week, if we say that God is number one, our lives should show, our activities should show that he's really number one in our lives. And it starts with prayer. If you know that you're struggling in this area, but or, or you feel a call to a greater level of prayer this morning, uh, I just want you to stand um, wherever you are with the sanctuary, over the sanctuary this morning. This is a time of honesty. We're a place of grace. There ain't no judgment here. If you know that you're struggling in your prayer life, or there's a desire for more prayer, and you feel like you're, you're, you're missing the grace that God has for you, just stand. And we're going to pray this morning for you. I'm standing with you because I know that God's called me to a greater place of prayer. And some of you say, well, I pray, but there's, there's another dimension I want to hit. I want to be transformed. Yeah in my prayer life. It's not that I don't pray, but I want to go deeper in prayer. I want to experience a greater, the greater that God has for me in prayer. If you stand too, we're going to pray for you this morning. Hallelujah. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Those who are standing this morning, just lift your hands. Take the time to surrender and to the Lord. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. Thank you for this day and this time. Father, we all come before you. I'm included because I know that you're calling me, oh God, to a deeper place of prayer, God. 
becoming comprehensive, we, we can become so distracted and so deterred by the things of this life that sometimes God we're just spiritually apathetic. Sometimes we're just preoccupied with all the distractions that you said, I'm calling you to come closer to me. And so, Father, this morning I pray for those who are standing, even those who are watching by live TV, even watching the rebroadcast right now. I pray that you would take us to a greater place of prayer. I pray, Lord God, first of all, foremost, that you will forgive us for the lack of prayer, for the lack of faith. You will forgive us for becoming distracted. You will forgive us, oh God, for allowing us to become inundated with everything else but being at your feet. Lord, I think about the story of Mary and Martha, where they served Jesus, oh God. And Martha got so angry with Mary. And Martha said, Jesus, do something. She should be helping me. He said, no, 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 Martha. She shows what's right. She said, at my feet, to learn of, to learn of me. And Father, some of us have been like Martha. And not to say what Martha has done was completely wrong because of how she needs to be served. But there's a time where we have to stop from our striving, stop our human effort, and sit at the feet of Jesus. So Lord, let us come before your feet today. Let us come before your throne today. We're recommitting ourselves to you today. We're giving ourselves a fresh. We say, Lord, breathe into our prayer lives again. God, let the intimacy grow deeper. Help us to remove all of the accoutrements, all of the excess, so we can really get down to the nitty-gritty, that we can really express our heart to you, that we can really be seen from you, that we can grow deeper in you, Father. So right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for renewed strength. And I thank you that your presence will come. Lord, for those who need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Lord, I pray that you would baptize them in the Holy Ghost and give them their prayer language, Lord. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. God, you're no respecter of person. That means what you need from one, you can show you to another. And so, Lord, I pray that as we go through this time of Lent and even as we go, oh, God, past Easter to Pentecost, I pray you would baptize some of my brothers and sisters today with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't have to happen right now. It doesn't have to happen at home. It happen whenever. But, Father, that you would do a work in their lives, that they would testify of your goodness and your grace today. God, thank you for taking our prayer to the next level. And if you believe that, church, go ahead and just give God praise right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we are going to the next level. You may be seated. I'm just, I'm just going gonna, gonna to add this addendum at the end. But those who say, who just, who just stood up for prayer, you said, I'm going to go deeper. Make a choice what that looks like this week. Remember I said, insanity, according to Albert Einstein, is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. You just said, I want my results in my prayer life to be different. What are you going to do different this week to make your prayer life different? For some of you, it means that as you have everything on your calendar, you need to put prayer on your calendar. So you know that at 6.20 every morning, that's my prayer time. I'm going to designate a, a portion of my day to prayer. For some of you, you have it on your calendar, but you just snooze, right, when it comes on. That means that now you've got to really get up and do something. For some of you, you might need to get a devotional book. We have Daily Bread devotionals out there, so you can read daily and have your prayer time. It might mean you need to open up the Bible app. There's an app called Pray. Amen, that you can use to help you to pray. It gives you scriptures. It even gives you worship music and, and meditative things that help you. Amen. So there are, there, there are tools and utensils out there that can help you to pray. Some of you just got to make up your mind to do it. I can give you all the utensils in the world, but until you actually do it, it won't be done. So some of you just make up, have a, a made up mind to go and pray this week. So what are you going to do different? You think about that. What are you going to do differently? For some of you, maybe it means getting up at 5.55 a.m. and join us for the Tuesday morning prayer call. You've never done that before. So maybe it's time to get up early just to say, you know what? I want to pray to my church. I want, I want to pray. I, I, I want to be blessed for the remainder of my week. I'm, I'm going to join this time of prayer. But whatever it is, think about what you're going to do differently. Because if you don't do anything, I'm going to preach a prayer message six months from now. You're going to be saying again, I know I need to be praying more. And you didn't do nothing about it. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Yeah. I'm trying to help y'all. Yeah. I'm trying to help myself. Yeah. What are you going to do differently so that you can experience more that God has in prayer? Last group of people I want to pray for, we're going to close, is if you have not made Jesus Christ 
the Lord of your life. What does that mean? That means that you're not walking with Jesus. That means that you don't have a relationship with him or you question if you have a relationship with him. I, I want to give you blessed assurance today. I want you to know that you know that you know that you know that Jesus Christ is Lord. I want you to know that you have a relationship with God. That when you pray, you don't have to beg because you're not constrained. That you know that you are a child of God. And if that's you this morning, if you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I just want you to raise your hand. If you want to recommit yourself back to Christ. Maybe you say, oh, I used to pray. I used to come to church. I used to, to grow in my faith. But I haven't picked up the Bible. My Bible is dusty, Pastor. I need to blow the dust off. If that's you, then I want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray for you this morning. If you're watching online this morning, I want to pray for you this morning. I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time, and I'll get to close. Now, we're going to pray this prayer all together, whether you're saved or you're not saved, but you want to be saved. We're going to pray this prayer, and I just want you to simply repeat after me. This, you making the Lord, making Jesus the Lord of your life. This is a prayer of faith from your heart, a heartfelt prayer. And just simply say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Your word says, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, that I will be saved. So right now, I thank you for salvation. And I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we believe that you are now a part of the family of God. It is that simple. It is that simple. But now we want to help you to walk out your, your, your faith this morning. If you, in person, you prayed that prayer for the first time, or you renew your, your faith in Christ today, there are resources that we want to give you. If you go to the Connect Center before you leave here, we have a Bible. We have things to help you. Amen. Roots class is starting this Wednesday. You can still sign up. Amen. And be a part of that roots class. Amen. To get the deeper understanding of what it is to be a child of God. Amen. So thank God for you. If you filled out, if you prayed that prayer line, fill out addition to the next card. You can go, amen, to our church website. You can click on the QR code. Amen. You can text us at eConnect at 94000. All those ways you get in contact to let us know that you prayed that prayer this morning. All right, guys. Until Jekyll all stand, we get ready to be dismissed. Don't forget to go to the bookstore. Everything is 25% off. Amen. Let's, let's clean it out. Amen. There's t-shirts, books. Uh, my wife and I, we have marital resources for Sticky Marriage. Amen. Y'all pray. Because I wasn't going to do a Sticky Marriage conference this year. The Holy Spirit's been speaking to me. So y'all y'all pray. So we did, you know, we did a Sticky Marriage event last month. You know, we did a little one night. But y'all pray. Because I, I, I think we might be doing a conference. So y'all Y'all pray. It's not engraved yet. God is still working on some stuff, but we might be doing a full-fledged marriage conference this year. Amen. And so, y'all pray for us. Pray for, pray for, do y'all pray for your pastor? Yeah. Like, do y'all really pray? Y'all have it. Y'all pray for us. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. And we thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment to sit in your word. We are following you. You said, follow me. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself daily. Pick up his cross and follow me. We're following you, Lord. Father, we want to follow you in prayer. Father, we want to have that deeper in intimacy with you, Lord, because we know that the exception for us is the righteous of us must. So this week, Father, we thank you for a faith-filled week. We ask that you'll cover us and keep us, protect us, guide us. May your peace and rest rule and abide over us, even now in the precious name of Jesus. Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, the honor and glory forever and ever. And let the Gavin Church say, Amen. and remember, as we gather here today, go and scatter God's love to your world. God bless you.